Hello everyone, Animanian here, and today we have the pleasure of having Seven, uh, NSFW, uh, with us to answer some questions and for a quick interview. So thank you so much Seven for joining in and I really appreciate uh, you taking the time for this. Um, so first of all, just a really, really quick thing. Uh, we do have an NSFW Blender Discord in the video description below, so please have a look down in the uh, video description. Um, because this is an awesome community of people and we have uh, I think 14k members right now so it's, it's insane uh, but anyway uh, also I wanted to give a quick mention to Seven's uh, Twitter so please he is an awesome awesome dude really generous kind and amazing so please have a look at his Twitter here uh, and follow him here and also uh, if you if you like his work please support him on Patreon because I'm sure he would very much appreciate your help and support so, uh, without further ado, let's begin the interview. So, Seven, can you tell me a little bit about yourself uh, to the people who might not know you, and what do you do, and what's your kind of specialty, would you say? Sure, so yeah, firstly, just thanks for having me. I uh, really do appreciate this, and for just coordinating uh, this whole interview. Um, my name is Seven. Uh, a lot of people know me as either Seven Graphics, Seven um, on Twitter, Discord. Uh, some people also know me as like Six Plus One uh, over on Reddit. Um, yeah, I primarily just do a lot of 3D renders uh, using Blender, uh, primarily with the cycles. And uh, I think most people just know me as like the sculpting guy. Um, I tend to just like doing a lot of intricate multi-res um, sculpts uh, with my work. And um, I recently, well, not really recently, I guess. It's been, well, like <laughs> almost a year now, um, ended up... Uh, releasing like a series of uh, sculpting videos that um, seem to <laughs> spread a lot a lot more than I was antip anticipating um, and uh, it was nice to see that it was able to help out a lot of people but um, yeah I just do a lot of sculpting um, a lot of just still renders no animations um, and lately I've been mostly known for my uh, near content Yep, definitely. I, I remember seeing you first through sculpting videos. Your sculpting videos are absolutely <laughs> insane. So right. those are some beautiful ones. Uh, thank you for that. So, and so your specialty is kind of in images. Do you have any specific niche or Correct. that you fit into, or do you just kind of do whatever uh, kind of? Fits um, right. So I kind of just do this as a hobby, and I'm just like a rather vanilla guy. So like. I, I don't really do anything specific when it comes to like a niche. I kind of just, uh, ideally I want to just make like really cinematic or just aesthetically pleasing things that you would use as wallpapers perhaps. Um, in most cases, like, yeah, I'll do like the occasional, like very NSFW stuff, but I usually like to kind of veer away from just doing completely just like explicit things um i like to uh put a bit of elegance into it if i can yeah. um and uh yeah i totally get so that. yeah i guess i guess not really anything specific just very very vanilla me um just kind of do what i uh kind of feel like doing for that day yep Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, your art is fantastic, honestly. And uh, yeah, I can totally get that cinematic <laughs> vibe from you. Do you think that doing NSFW art is an easy career and is viable for most people? Because you said you d did it as a hobby, but just from your right. experience, like because I know a lot of other people want to do NSFW art. Yeah, well. I actually work in the like design art field as like a full-time thing. And like going into this stuff with like... Twitter's my main platform, so I only really know that as my main, uh, or that I just have the most experience with that and like Patreon. Um, I would say that doing the art is rather easy. There's so many tutorials and so many different communities you can go to, like your own uh, NSW Blender uh, server. Um, there's just a lot of like communities like that that you can just access um, to kind of get the general gist of how to begin it. Yeah, but actually doing it as a career, I, it, it is very tough. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a very easy thing. Um, you should definitely be prepared to, uh, put in a lot of hours into like honing in your craft. Um, I'd say it's a very saturated market right now. I am part of like the, 
I guess like the COVID generation of artists. Um, I feel like during that, uh, during that, uh, shutdown, um, a lot of people just were kind of just forced to just stay at home, um, needed new hobbies to, um, develop and just pursue to kill the time. And, uh, during that time, myself and a bunch of others that I know, uh, all started to just pick up blender, um, just give it a try, uh, create, uh, work with it. But, um, because of that, I feel like more and more, um, the, the community is definitely getting a lot larger. Um, and unless you have a specific niche or, uh, know exactly what you want to do with it, I feel like it could be very easy to get lost. Um, and might even get discouraged. Um, main thing I would suggest is to not focus too much on numbers in the beginning. Uh, I feel like that'll be very discouraging. Um, just mostly just focus on improving yourself, uh, compare your previous works with what you're doing now, seeing how you can, uh, advance and how you can develop as an artist. Um, the community itself I'd say is, uh, just generally getting a lot and a lot, uh, I guess smarter with, um, what they consider as uh good and bad art like um i feel like there's a, a couple of people out there who will just assume that all you got to do is just put in some nudity and it'll just sell um really well yep. but i feel like the general taste of people has definitely been developing um people are starting to get like yeah this is a good artist this is someone who's actually trying hard to um make something out of their name um out of their work um and can tell when someone else is slacking off um so yeah i just say to if you do want to do it as a career um definitely do a bit of planning ahead of time uh and sorry figure out a good way to kind of um yeah, market yourself, uh, network out, um, meet other people, learn how to improve and yeah, just really show that you're passionate for it. Yep. Um, because it, I think that really shows, uh, when someone is passionate and when someone isn't. Yep. Like being part of the community and, but, and the right. like, yeah, that was, that was wonderful advice. I think, uh, for you artists, but you also said I quote, that you were part of the design industry. So how was kind of going into the NSF field uh, nsfw field like transitioning from that like from your prior experience right for you um so i think my my path into doing all this was a little different from a lot of others um a lot of the other people that i hang out with uh they seem to have not had uh much of any like art experience or any art background before this like i know a lot of people who are just like in like the computer science field or uh they do something like engineering or something that's completely not art um so i guess it's like an encouraging thing um you don't have to be an artist beforehand to know how to do this stuff like you could definitely like teach yourself art i feel like most of the times like i went to an art school um for wow. uni and whatnot and even there um even though it was like supposedly like a very like prestigious like art school art school for like design and such it's still just a lot of self-teaching um the professors are pretty much just there just to kind of guide you a little bit. But what you learn is pretty much just depends on how much time you commit, uh, into, uh, kind of teaching yourself, practicing, doing a lot of repetition, uh, to make it more second nature. Gotcha. Um, so like for myself, I definitely had a lot of like fundamentals that I was able to kind of like crutch off of. Um, I didn't do anything or didn't use any programs that were like, like blender. Um, I definitely had to go through the usual, uh, donut tutorial, yeah. uh, blender guru route <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> learn blender and such. But, um, I did have like a good sense of, uh, understanding for like lighting and the like, composition, things of that nature. So, uh, that stuff was a lot easier for me to pick up. It was more so just understanding how to use blender itself to apply the things that I do know. Like um, applying those principles. Yep. So, <laughs> Right, right. So like, I would know how to light, but like, if I don't know how to add a light, that's kind of a problem there. So <laughs> that's a um, challenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like, each each project, especially in the beginning, was definitely more of like a learning experience, and I think that was like the most encouraging part for me to continue on, um, just doing it more and more, uh, just to get better at it and just constantly learning new stuff. That's an amazing kind of thing that you've like been able to transition from like art school and were you doing like kind of figure drawing kind of thing was that the kind of thing you did at art school yeah yeah so that 
that actually helped out a lot. So um, I got a degree in industrial design, so it's like product design. Yeah. Um, so it, I didn't do a lot of like fine arts stuff, but like I remember our like first two years or so, we had some of those like fine arts electives, which is like drawing and uh, painting and such. Um, and during the drawing classes, I definitely did a lot of like nude figure drawings. Um, <laughs> and I think those helped out quite a bit um just because like doing it so often kind of helps with just understanding and that general human anatomy i guess yeah. uh just from constantly doing those forms and shapes and how um i think i feel like a lot of like the trickier parts that a lot of people struggle with when they're doing sculpts is like the armpit area or um the rib cage um anywhere where there's a lot of uh intense deformations like when you completely uh like bend your arm or leg, um, yep. things of that nature, flex your feet, um, moving your hands, um, things of that uh, nature. And uh, doing that stuff definitely helped out quite a bit. Um, and even now, I definitely don't do everything just off of the back of my head. I still use a lot of references when needed. Um, I actually have like a, a very large selection of just like random cropped images of whatever is out there uh, that I could find um, of like specific body parts uh, doing specific poses and I like to just reference those whenever I start doing my sculpts so I make sure nothing looks completely ridiculous <laughs> hopefully yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah having having that background knowledge was definitely helpful uh, and is still definitely helpful and uh, understanding how something generally should be but then once it gets to like the finer detail stuff then yeah I'll refer to references just because there's nothing better than um using real life body if you're trying to do more realistic looking sculpts towards nsfw content there's like this huge taboo right. like towards creating it and just kind of being part of any community which is which interacts with nsfw content so what would you say to the idea that making nsfw content especially 3d content is wrong like what would you say to that Right. Um, it's tough just because I feel like the whole reason why it's NSFW is because um, there's a specific audience you don't want it to be for, uh, which is why it becomes so taboo. Like, um, yeah. I, I do agree with the aspect that it shouldn't be um, advertised or like shown to like a younger audience or someone or just people in general who like wouldn't be um like it just wouldn't be good for um but uh when it comes to people of age and just like people who um are in this field yep. i wouldn't say it's right to call it a wrong thing uh it's just another aspect or just another side to art in itself um i feel like only doing uh, safer work or only doing NSFW is not really, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, I've been in both sides. Um, I've met people on both sides and they're honestly the exact same. Artists are really just trying to um, convey what they want, uh, how they're feeling about a specific thing uh, to a specific audience. So if you're not part of the like interest of the NSFW side of things, then why bother just stay with the more safe work stuff that you would prefer. Yep. Uh, but on the like flip side, like if you want to venture out, like there's a whole new, like whole new field of things that you could do within like the NSW community. Um, I like to kind of just like juggle between the two. Um, I don't like to just stay uh, NSW or just stay uh, safe at work. I like to kind of just hop between the two because uh, I find it more interesting that way as a creative um i feel like just limiting yourself to just one half of it is kind of restricting at times um i get that people do it because they want to uh stay safe in a sense i know a lot of people in the uh nsw side of the community um they're rather anonymous about who they are just because they don't want it to be linked to like their real-time professions or something just because it could lead to complications um, which is yeah. definitely a bummer. Um, I feel like a lot of like the safe work side don't have to deal with that as much, but, um, to each their own. Um, I think if you do want to, uh, criticize the NSW community, like you're kind of being a bit ignorant to, um, the amount of work that's still being put into, uh, the field itself, uh, the 
artists that I meet in this community are still like they're like just as hardworking as the ones I see in the safe work and their goals and their uh, what they're trying to do with their art is pretty much the same. It's just the type of stuff that they do is a little different. Um, and yeah, I don't I don't really see anything particularly wrong with it uh, unless it's, of course, like intentionally illegal. meant to be yeah. uh, harmful or illegal or something of that nature. But that could be said with like safe work stuff things too. Um, gotcha. But yeah. Yeah. So like you, you try both sides of things because like right. it, it kind of, it kind of just allows you to express yourself like more creatively, like both safe exactly. work and, and SFW. Like, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Like that's a really good answer towards, mm-hmm. you know, artists. Uh, what advice would you give them on how to grow as an NSFW artist? Like where do they even start? Like what, what should they do? Oh boy. Um, so I'd say the very first thing you'd want to do is, um, well, other than just learning the software itself, um, I would definitely just start out with the donut tutorial. Um, if you're not into like a class format of that nature, um, another thing I could suggest, uh, to get kind of a general basis of how blender is done is by joining some sort of discord community or some sort of stream um and just watch how other people do it um blender is sort of like photoshop and where there's like a billion ways to do the exact same thing um and i feel like everyone kind of does it slightly differently um and it's really just about finding your own rhythm uh into how you want to make your own pieces um but yeah, once you get that stuff down, I'd say the most important thing, um, or I guess like the main thing that visually separates like a quote unquote experienced artist with like a beginner one is just lighting. Um, yeah. I would spend a lot of time, even if it's not like towards a piece, maybe just do like a practice thing with um, just like some random objects that you find online. Um, just put them into a scene uh, and try to, Perhaps if you're going for like a photorealistic type of thing, uh, use references of like a actual lighting setup of like an, an image of some sort of like lighting situation and try to replicate that. Understand how the lights work, um, understanding like the shadow radius of the lights, uh, the wattage of it, how it affects that. Um, if the light is close to the object, how will it affect the lighting and the shadows? And if it's further away, how will it affect the lighting and the shadows? And kind of just see. Um, how that kind of how the interaction between the lighting and the um objects within the scene um change with each of the different settings because there's so many settings within blender um understanding what each of them do is just like very crucial um to get the lighting down um one of the main things i'd say for lighting specifically is um don't overdo the lighting i feel like a lot of people kind of neglect shadows um, because they're too afraid of uh, making their scene not visible enough uh, to the audience. Uh, Want to make sure that everything that they're trying to portray in the art is visible uh, and is very obvious to the eye. Um, This kind of goes back to what I was saying about just like the general, the general viewers, the general consumers of our art. Um, They're definitely getting a lot smarter with the more content that's out there. Um, I feel like they're definitely learning the same way that we are uh, through just consuming it and uh, seeing how people are progressing. Um, our eyes are pretty smart. They'll know, they'll be able to uh, make out the shapes uh, even if they are hidden in shadows. Uh, shadows are very important in order to create depth and realism. Um, so try to keep that in mind and not just completely uh, overdo the lighting and just wash out all the shadows. Um, Yep. But yeah, just do a lot of that. And then once you get the lighting down, uh, perhaps work on the finer things that can kind of change over time. Um, I feel like the way I've done lighting and the way I've done like things like uh, the composition of stuff, um, how I arrange things in the uh, little rectangle that I um, kind of frame everything yep. has changed over the uh two plus ish years that I've been doing this now. Um, how would you say it's it's always just a learning experience? Um, I think it's just really evolved with, um, just knowing what more I could do with the platform itself. 
Uh, Blender in itself, I kind of see as just like any other medium, whether it be like a more traditional one, um, like charcoal or pencil, um, oil paints, things of that nature. Um, the more you use it, the more you understand how it behaves um, and what you can do with it, uh, its strengths and weaknesses. Um, and I'd say like the main things that I started to learn um, as I started to use it more was um, other than like sculpting, like knowing how to use like multi-resolution modifier uh, in itself, um, I guess the shader editor, uh, compositor, um, things of that nature, uh, being able to use those to kind of tweak the visuals a bit, um, more so more to uh, your liking and how you're trying to uh, portray a specific emotion with it. Um, I feel like with my work, a lot of people usually summarize it as low saturation, um, a tint of blue to it. Um, and yeah, I just like a lot of blues supposedly. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, things of that nature, I guess. Um, stuff, maybe. Yeah. Vol volumetrics everywhere. Soft lighting, um, just soft images very soft everything yeah very cinematic yeah that kind of feel i definitely get that when i'm yeah. in your artworks what's your favorite mm -hmm. piece that you've kind of worked on i'd say my favorite one is actually a more recent one i did it wasn't like my biggest or anything but it was one i did of zero uh, yeah, yeah, yeah got you i think that's my favorite one um mostly just because i don't know i just like the general colors of it and i just like the character itself um I feel like in the 3D scene, um, there's not really a lot of her um, just because she came from a pretty old game and uh, there's just not a lot of resources out there for her. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I I started to do a lot of near content lately. Uh, I started out with Overwatch, like I feel like a lot of people do just because the IP itself is very big. Um, and there's like this- uh, Following around it? Kind of like, yeah, there's a big following. So it's kind of, I'd say it's kind of misleading to be honest. Um, you would think that it's a lot easier to grow with Overwatch, but since there's so many people doing Overwatch, it's actually pretty hard to <laughs> get yourself recognized because you're doing Overwatch. It's yeah. because the, it's just so saturated. Um, you're just another so I kind of just got, <laughs> right, exactly. You're just another Overwatch artist uh, just contributing to the billions of stuff out there. Um, so yeah, I kind of just started to go to more of the near direction just because, um, it's just generally my favorite franchise. Um, I only really like to work with characters that I know pretty well, um, from series that I've played, um, yep. rather aggressively. <laughs> and, um, yeah, there's a, this is a lot of characters in the whole dragon year, um, scene. And there's a lot of them that aren't really represented a lot um in the 3d space and especially with like the recent gotcha game that came out for like mobile um near reincarnation this since it's a gotcha game there's just a ton of like really neat outfits and such of all these like random like new characters that nobody really knows about it's kind of like a free market for me uh just like all these different new things that i could potentially um make work off of yeah. um playing the games a bit, uh, learning the characters and using that as my inspiration to uh, create work of them. But um, yeah, Zero is just one of those characters that I feel like is very loved by the people who do know her. Um, yep. And since there's just not a lot of her out there, it's always a good time to be able to uh, create something with her. How you created the ruffles of a dress, did you kind of sculpt that? Like yeah it looks insane, uh, like honestly yeah i i, I kind of just sculpted everything um so yeah the the pain behind this is just the fact that this dress is just completely covering her entire legs and i just used the in-game phone like the mobile game rig and model um so super low poly super low res um i think the textures themselves are only like 1024p or something like that um it was like super super low res um so i had to kind of just make the most of it um and the model itself had to be low poly, of course, to run on a phone. Um, so there were definitely some challenges with that. Um, had to basically bump up the subdivisions quite a bit, make it a little more usable for myself, and then tweak it, uh, sculpt a bunch to uh, form it more so to the facial proportions and such that I like. Um, and I think it better represents her. And then 
uh, from there, yeah, I just had to fight with that dress quite a bit. Um, I'd say that's definitely the <laughs> my, my uh, proudest moment um, of this piece. It was honestly <laughs> such a pain. I One thing that a lot of people know about me is that I absolutely hate posing. Um, probably one of the reasons why is because I'm always working with such like awful rigs, um, just like these like just the games from the or just the rigs from the in-game models uh, so yeah it's always a pain so whatever i can do in pose or in sculpt mode i will do uh, um there have been times where i actually just use the pose brush to pose rather than <laughs> using the rig itself just because i hate rigging that much um i guess that's another tip i can give to artists um try to find a workflow where you do more of the things you enjoy um to pretty much uh, not have to do as much of the things you don't like yep. doing. Um, because I enjoy sculpting so much, I find it very um, calming and just satisfying just because you get immediate results of uh, what you're doing. Um, yep. I try to do as much as I can in just sculpting um, and not so much as uh, with the, the posing. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, that dress itself, I did not pose at all. It was just shooting out <laughs> towards the camera um i had to kind of use a lot of grab brush and uh make it work somehow that's a gorgeous result and yeah that, i think that's you touched on something about um how you don't have to like do basically everything like you can just do the parts that right. you like and specialize in it like right because like, that's kind of i think i don't know like uh, something that I always see new artists like they're like I have to create everything uh, I have to create the model I right that other stuff and yeah so yeah it's all it's all about just working smarter uh, finding ways to uh, become more efficient at what you're doing um, I say that I'm at a point now where I'm definitely plateauing a bit um, I'm not learning at the rate that I was when I first started because back then like literally every single project every single day was a whole new experience I was learning something every single time um, nowadays it's usually I know how to do stuff it's more so now how can I do it faster and still have the same quality um, that I've been trying to maintain um, throughout my time of uh, making this stuff but um yeah if you're if you're brand new don't don't overwhelm yourself trying to do every single thing i feel like that's going to be like the most discouraging thing just because you're going to feel like you can't do anything um start with very simple things first um know just know yourself know what you can can't do um test that out if you don't know and kind of just set yourself like small goals just small steps one at a time um try to just get one thing through and then once you get enough done you'll just naturally acquire the knowledge needed to uh learn the tougher stuff and hopefully get to the end result that you've been wanting what's your workflow for approaching like a piece when you're going from like nothing to mm -hmm. a finished product so do you have like a specific thing that you go through like um planning initial poses i think it right i think it slightly changes um each time uh there are some moments where I definitely do a lot more planning. Um, I like to uh, storyboard every now and then, uh, just jot down notes or make like quick sketches of uh, general compositions or things I'd like to try out. Um, or maybe there's like a general theme that I want to um, attempt, um, especially within like the like Brackenier universe. Um, there's just a lot of characters from there that I haven't done any work with yet so yep. um kind of just like do my research and just understand the characters better and then maybe try to uh create some type of art piece of something they would do during their time in whatever game um yeah and you, then yeah. kind of use that as inspiration right and then i think the general methodology of how I do stuff is pretty similar to how a lot of other people would. Um, once I get the character, like the idea down, I just start out with posing, um, skip through that as quick as possible. Um, do what I like the very minimum of what I need to do. So it's usually just like the adjustment of the torso and like the, like the joints, like where the arm would bend, uh, like the elbows and legs. Um, and then the rest, I would just try to sculpt just because I'm to a point now where I'm very confident with my sculpting, um, and I could do it rather quickly. So, 
um, it's not really much of a time loss. And at the same time, I'm going to be enjoying it more by doing the sculpts. Um, so yeah, I'll just pose and the sculpt it. And then once I get that down, that's when I start working on environments. Um, I'd say, um, try to come up with different arrangements. I usually use uh blender kit. I believe it's called, yeah, yeah. um, blender kit. just get assets from there. Uh, just arrange things how I want. Uh, if I can't find stuff there, then, um, I'll ask around, uh, it's because there's quite a few communities that I'm in now. Um, a lot of connections that I have to different f friends and such who specialize in like modeling or, uh, things of that nature. Um, yep. go to them, see if they have specific assets, um, and kind of just scoop it from them and then get the environment down. Uh, and then I'll go into lighting and I'd say for lighting, one tip I'd have is use as little lights as possible. Um, I think once you get to too much, it'll become very, well, this is for like more, I'd say more on like the, the photorealistic side of things rather than like super stylized. Um, if you're trying to go for more realism, then yeah, avoid using too many lights. Uh, try to think of how things would be in real life. If there's only supposed to be like two, three lights, then maybe try to limit yourself to just two, three lights. Um, instead of just trying to use like a billion, a billion of them uh, and then uh, hoping for the best. Um, that's just going to be way too hard to tweak. Um, and then once I do that, um, I try to do everything or as much of it as possible in Blender. Um, I know a lot of other people usually incorporate other stuff into like other software, whether it be like Substance Painter or things of that nature into their uh, workflow as well. Um, yep. The only other thing I really do is once I render it out, I go into the compositor and then um, do slight compositing. It's usually just to like add like a bit of bloom here and there um, and maybe like a bit of lens distortion. But uh, after that, I usually just take the raw render and then just go into um, the Photoshop if I have to tweak something, like whether it be like some rendering error, like I find something clipping. Um, one of the benefits of the fact that I render in 8K and at like super high samples, <laughs> usually like 7,500 to like 10K samples yeah. is it gives me plenty of time to look at the render really intricately and make sure there's no issues with it. <laughs> um, so whenever I do post something and I end up finding out that there's some sort of issue with it, that, that shit usually just freaks me the hell out. Um, I'm always terrified that that's going to happen, but, uh, thankfully those really long render times, um, thankfully they're not like too long. Um, but still usually like six to eight hours to render, which I know is usually six ridiculous for uh, a <laughs> still image. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> it used to be a lot more, um, before I beefed up my rig quite a bit, but, um, yeah, so I guess it is subjective, but now, nowadays I usually find like six to eight hours, not that long, <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, during that time, it's plenty of time to find those issues. But um, yeah, I'll I'll correct those if I need to, or if I find anything that uh, needs correcting in Photoshop, and then I'll go into color grading, whether it be within Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, they both use the same camera raw engine, um, and then just do my color grading there. Got it. Got it. Um, but yeah, that's that's really about it. Um, there's a like people probably will notice I do a lot of like monochromatic renders alongside my uh, colored ones. There's always like a black and white variant. Um, yep. Black some of my yeah. patrons back in the day, like, rec like suggested that I do that because, um, I guess they would like to use it as like their phone wallpapers and such, and wanted to use like the black and white ones as like their lock screen. And then the colored ones as their home. Um, so yeah, I just kind of just been doing those. Uh, yeah. Afterwards, um, just color graded twice, uh, once for like a more monochromatic thing. And then ones for the uh, colored variant. And yeah. then, yeah, I just prep the files, plop the watermark, and then just distribute it. it. I feel like what I do is nothing like particularly special. Like people are always asking like, uh, what are your secrets and such? It's just really just a lot of patience. Um, just be patient with your work. Uh, don't rush it. Um, of course, people's situations are different. Uh, some people maybe have to have some set quota. Um, if you do have a quota of, that you have to meet of a certain amount of pieces you need done by a specific time, then be realistic with it. Um, don't overdo it. Uh, that'll just burn you out. Yep. Um, but if you don't have that type of um, requirement like myself, um, that's why I try so hard to uh, not monetize too much off of it, not try to uh, 
market myself too much just because I don't want to turn this into another full-time job for myself. Yeah, I feel like that'll, yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's just going to be too much for me. Um, it's already a lot for me. Um, a lot of the times, especially nowadays, since, um, there's just a lot less free time with the world just reopening, um, and yep. COVID not being as big of an issue anymore. Um, but yeah, um, if you, if you care about growth, um, the people will gravitate towards you if they see the amount of effort you put in. Yeah. Um, and the only way they'll be able to see that is by actually putting it in yourself. Um, take your time with your work. Don't, don't rush it. I'm definitely more of a quality over quantity type of person. Yep. But, uh, they can see the yeah. passion that goes into your work. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, well, I hope so. They can, they can <laughs> definitely. Um, thank you so, so much, so much for your like detailed explanation of your workflow. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, of course a lot of pointers from that myself so yeah and i'm sure other people will find that very useful uh, just two final questions so sure just one more so, so just about the um what about like so do you have any future plans for things that you want to do in the nsfw art or otherwise right um i guess it's just a lot from uh, near really uh there's still like a ton more characters that i've prepped already but I just haven't had the time or just the will to do it at the very moment. Um, yep. I feel like I kind of have to be in the mood to do a specific character um, in order to initiate it. I have like terabytes of just like work in progress projects that I just <laughs> never completed just because I like I'm just in the mood for it one day and then the next day it just kind of just disappears. Um, but yeah, I, it's just a, just a lot more from the, the near universe. I i've been interacting a lot more with the different discord communities uh within the universe whether it be safe work or not safe work and i honestly have been having a blast um interacting with those people um it's always like an amazing feeling when you meet someone who's never heard of you before especially myself just because my i feel like my branding is rather cryptic uh it's pretty hard to find me just off of my watermark yeah. alone but the people who do find my work, uh, even though they don't know me, but they do know of it. And um, they like post like a screenshot and it turns out that they're using my stuff as their wallpaper. Um, things like that usually are just like the, the best things you can kind of do for an artist without really uh, saying anything to them. Um, and it's always like super motivating for myself, um, knowing that my work is being appreciated out there. Um, people are using it for stuff as like wallpapers and uh, things of that nature that you see every single day. Um, but yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Just, okay. just more near. <laughs> good plan. Get back <laughs> to the plan. community I've been enjoying. That's a good plan. And I can right. understand that feeling of like having in people enjoying your work and you can just be like, yes, <laughs> in the background. Exactly. Um, just as a final question, I guess, just to finish off this interview, what do you think about the future of NSFW art and where do you think it's going to go? Social oh media? boy. Um, honestly, I have, I have no idea. People are just getting so good. Um, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of these like, new heads out there. Um, there's like Chirax and, uh, who else is out there? XO, um, all these other people who are just like, uh, just came out of nowhere and are just so good. Um, always flexing and just showing off like these new things that they can do and i'm just like this is the new generation of artists um and i'm just so excited to see where they end up going with this um i guess like when it comes to how it'll change or evolve i'm, I'm not sure like maybe it's just because i feel like we've gotten to a point now where people are making stuff that are kind of reaching the point where it's hard to tell if it's real or not yeah um, i feel like there's only so much more you can grow on the like photorealism side of things um i'm more so excited for like with the introduction of like geometry nodes and all these other things um how people can get creative with those new features and perhaps go the opposite direction um not go so more like so much for like realism and go for a more stylistic approach uh with blender um, it always amazes me when people use it and can make stuff that look like 2d or look a very specific, uh, specific way. Um, I feel like those are the type of people who really catch my attention nowadays, uh, rather than the ones who can just do like highly detailed, highly realistic renders. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just more so excited to see what people do with um, stylized field. Yeah, each new feature that kind of comes with uh, Blender, and yeah, but just more so on like the more stylistic side of things. Yeah, just because that's not my that's not my uh, not my strength. So. I don't really get to see a lot of it. So it's just something I'd like to see more of. Yeah, something unique. But yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, well, thank you so much for the interview, uh, Seven. I really, really appreciate you giving your time again. Um, so please support Seven Graphics on his Twitter right here. And like, give him a follow. And of course, if you enjoy his work, please do support him on his, on his Patreon because I'm sure he would very much appreciate that. Are there any other final points that you'd like to state? Thanks or? for that. Um... I I don't I don't know I don't think so. Okay, sure. Uh, but no yeah, worries. that's definitely it. check me out if uh, if you like my work. Um, don't feel forced to. It won't hurt my feelings. Um, <laughs> but yeah, definitely appreciate this and uh, just getting the time to chat with you. Thank you so much. It means a lot. So thank you so much. Uh, I guess uh, we'll see you around. And thank you so much for being here. Yep.